Today we're going to talk about the flight of SpaceX's Starship SN11 and try to figure out why it hit the ground in more than one piece. At 8am on Tuesday the 30th of March, Starship SN11's three Raptor engines ignited and it lifted off into the foggy Texas sky. This was by far the earliest in the day that SpaceX had launched any Starship prototype and it was also great to see that there were no issues to trigger an auto abort like we've seen a few times in the past. One advantage of the poor visibility is that we get a lot of views from the engine cameras. First we see a new angle from the belly side of the skirt and there's a fire on an engine again. Engine number two. I'm getting tired of pointing this out but I figured since it seems to happen so often that it probably wouldn't be a big deal. We also briefly get this awesome view from inside the methane tank. We know it's the methane tank because you can just faintly see the header tank below. On the right you can see the downcomer pipe which brings in the liquid oxygen from the header tank in the nose cone. From the camera on the back side of the skirt we can still see some flames puffing out from behind engine 2. Also notice that engine's exhaust is orange, unlike the other two engines. Again, that's something I've talked about in previous Starship videos and it's normally not something we would be worried about. Similar to SN10, engine 3 shuts down as planned at 2 minutes and 12 seconds, which is later than it did with SN8 and SN9. Engine 2 shuts down while the camera is frozen, but it looks like it happened around the same time as with previous flights. At this point, the camera drops out and we get no footage of the final shutdown or the flip to the belly flop position. However, when the signal comes back, we can see that Starship is turning quite a bit in its yaw axis. Clearly SpaceX is really testing out Starship's aerodynamic maneuvering characteristics. Something crucial for re-entry. And again, thanks to the otherwise loathsome fog, we get to see lots of footage of the flaps working their magic. At about 5 minutes and 14 seconds, the engine rechill begins. And with this shot, you know it's time to be quiet and pay attention. We see the engine's gimbal to prepare for the relight and the flip maneuver. Engine 3 lights and then the camera freezes. From a ground camera we can hear the telltale signs of multiple pieces of debris hitting the ground all over the place. In this footage from Eric Hansen from the build site, we still can't see anything, but we sure can hear what happened. Now I actually measured the time between the first two engine ignitions on the other flights and I got answers ranging from about 0.8 seconds to 1 second. The time between relight and the explosion on SN11 was just over 1.1 seconds, so it seems like whatever went wrong, it happened very shortly after the troublesome engine 2 ignited. Or attempted to ignite, anyway. From NASA Space Flight's camera, we can see the glow of the relight, which continues for a second or two as the explosion creates a fireball no one will ever see. And then it starts raining Starship pieces. As of recording, we don't have official confirmation whether SN11 exploded from natural causes or if the flight termination system was activated. The flight termination system, or FTS, is basically an explosive charge fitted to stop the vehicle if it veers too far from its planned flight path. My guess is that it was not the FTS, because if we look at the photos from RGV aerial photography, the big and heavy pieces like the engines and nose cone were quite close to the landing pad, and Elon even said that SN11 cratered in the right spot, so the FTS probably wasn't needed. Elon also tweeted that engine 2 had issues on ascent and did not reach its operating chamber pressure upon relighting. That, along with everything else we saw relating to engine 2, makes me suspect that whatever caused SN11 to explode was probably somehow connected to a failure of that engine. Elon added that SN15 would be rolling out soon, which sounded unlikely, but it recently had its aft flaps attached and it looks like it might just be getting its nose cone soon. 
It will be interesting to see if it performs the same 10 km flight we've become familiar with, since no Starship before SN20 will have a full heat shield. If you made it this far into the video, please consider subscribing to see more like it in the future. I'd also really appreciate it if you liked the video and let me know your thoughts about SN11's flight in the comments. The engagement really helps push these videos out to even more people. Until the flight of SN15, you can check out my other Starship videos too. Thanks for watching.